Now the manner I will go about is as follows. I will choose a center and then I will ask a couple of people to make their points. They have read this article on you and your research. So, they are supposed to mention one or two important things that they gathered from this particular article. I would also request that you speak about only those points which were new to you. In other words, something new that you have gathered, right. Supposing you already knew something about research and that same thing has been mentioned, then you need not make the point. So, I want you to uh, stick to the uh, article you and your research, point number 1. And I want you to mention only those points from this article which you did not know earlier and which you have been exposed to only while reading the article, okay. Something new you have learnt out of the article, okay. Now, with these constraints, let us begin. Wales University, Chennai. Uh, this is a summarized uh, version of uh, you and your research by research hiring at Dell Communication Research Research Center seminar which was delivered in uh, 1986. Mainly, I am able to identify two points from the entire session. One is luck favors the prepared mind. That is, once uh, you have, you prepare your mind yourself towards the research, what you are aiming for, luck automatically favors. This is the one thing. And when you are famous, and it is very hard to work on small problems, that is, uh, this article when he talks about research means it is talking about uh, research in the kind of Nobel Prize kind of research, right. Once you reach to such a kind of, uh, once you do such a kind of research, then it is very difficult for you to work on uh, smaller problems. These are the two points which I identified, sir. Anyone else wants to uh, mention any other points? Please, I want to make one point, uh, creativity comes out of subconsciousness. So, once there is a scientist, uh, I cannot remember the name of the scientist, he actually uh, uh, designed the structure of benzene, sir. He designed the structure of benzene. Uh, before that, he did not know, actually the carbon and carbon, the, the bond length between the carbon and carbon length, in case of uh, benzene is somewhere, somewhere very less to the nor normal carbon bonding. So actually, if, if the normal carbon bonding is, uh, is uh, let, let's say it is 3, the carbon bonding in benzene is it is 1.5. So what he did is, uh, he do not know what is the difference between a normal ca carbon bond and a ca carbon bond in benzene. So he, he uh, thought, about the pro thought about the problem and he slipped along with that problem itself. So in his uh, dream, a snake came and it, uh, 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 the, the mouth of a snake uh, catch hold of the uh, catch hold of its tail, and it start started revolving. So uh, uh, w w w he uh, after that he got after he got up from the dream, uh, he found out the uh, actual uh, thing that is going on in the benzene ring. Actually, the uh, uh, benzene, the carbon uh, the, that is the double bond in the benzene ring, gets getting revolved. So that is the thing he found out after a long uh, after a long time of research. So that creativity comes out of subconscious mind. So it's the point uh, I, I, that is a new thing I came came across in the in the you in the from the new you and your research. So Richard, um, so Richard Hamming has he made that point? Yes, sir. He made it point. Okay. So Alluri Institute of Management Sciences, Warangal. Well, you and your research. I need. I want to enlighten some points when we are uh, taking care of uh, research. From my point of view, after reading this uh, particular research paper. As it says that uh, brains are not enough, you also need courage. So as Hamming said that uh, you need to have the courage to do the research and uh, you need to continue the research under any circumstances. And uh, one more thing is that make best of your working conditions. Whenever most of our uh, co-participants are saying that uh, we are not getting uh, sufficient time to do it on the res research. But uh, having uh, as clearly mentioned that uh, your research and your working conditions will uh, help you to complete your research as soon as possible and be, please make a best use of your working conditions. That's all, sir. Over and out. Okay. MANIT Bhopal. Uh, sir, what I gathered from that article, I could not read the full article, but 
uh, I went through it and uh, whatever I could gather in what I had read is uh, something that appealed to me was courage. Now, we should not lose courage as you were talking here that we start uh, with uh, too much of enthusiasm our research work and then finally we get frustrated. We ha should have the courage not only to accept our success but we should have courage to accept our failures as well. And then only we will find some new ways to again get success in uh, the research work that we are doing and enthusiasm will still remain there where it is. The other thing I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, something is mentioned about the age but uh, it is said that always uh, good work are done when the age is uh, like you are young in age. Now I am at the age of 50, I have started my PhD. Now many people laugh, laugh at this, that at this age you are starting your PhD, but someone has said that if something is not someone is not laughing on your goal, that means your goal is a very small goal. If somebody is laughing at that, that means your goal is big. So I keep that courage and that courage is still encouraging me and I think I will never lose my enthusiasm while doing my PhD. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Okay. Jilai Institute of Technology, Durg. Uh, I read this article as recommended by you, sir. Uh, that is the article you and your research. And uh, Professor Hamming uh, starts the article by saying that uh, all of us who uh, pursue research should pursue it uh, from the point of view of a long term, uh, uh, you know, the impression of the research should be very long lasting and it should have a lasting impact and uh, very succinctly I would want to say that uh, Professor Hemming highlighted that important work is uh, the right problem right way at the right time. Thank you sir, over and out. Okay. Uh, Malareddy College of Engineering Technology, Sikandrabad. Dr. and your research. He has invented Hamming code, Hamming distance, the Hamming spectral window by numerical methods. He said that what appears to be a fault often by change of viewpoint may be one of the greatest assets you can have. And uh, knowledge and productivity are like compound interest. They tend to multiply as you go on improving yourself. And your research is more under your control than you may realize. And there are also some personal traits Often successful people exhibit more activity, more energy than most people do. These personal traits when coupled with emotional commitment and courage is another attribute of doing great things. Without courage you are unlikely to attack important problems with any persistence and hence not likely to do important things and the ability to tolerate ambiguity is another trait. You also need to have a vision of who you are and where your field is going. Based on that, you have to be wise enough to take a decision on what problem you have to solve. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Let us go to SVITS Indore. From SVITS Indore, I have gone through the summarized lecture. You and your research by Richard Hemming. Uh, partially and uh, in his lecture he has told or he has written luck favors the prepared mind second one when you are famous it is hard to work on small problems then if you don't work on an important problem it is unlikely that you will do import important work you should ask yourself what are the important problems in my mind. If you, you are deeply immersed and committed to a topic day after day, your subconscious has nothing to do work out of the problem. These are the things I have read through this. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make two points, one which I favor and another which I don't. Number one, uh, he has said that it is a poor workman who blames his tools, the good man gets on with the job given what he get and gets the best answer he can. So I just, uh, I favor this point. Uh, often uh, many of us blame that we are not giving, uh, we, are, we are not getting good resources, we are not getting uh, secondary material or something. So we should rather do not blame the resources and come out with a good result. Another point which I do not favor is, he said that don't struggle with the system all the time, rather follow and cooperate too. 
So sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to follow the system since there are so many loopholes in the system uh, which require a kind of struggle for on uh, our part. If at all we uh, have to make our research great, as he has already said in the beginning that he is talking about great research and not, in a, not a general research. So these are the two points that I want to make. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let me repeat the points made in this center. So one point is that uh, Richard Hamming has said that do not always fight with the system. Uh, you should also cooperate with the system because this allows you time to do your research. Uh, the second point uh, that was made was Richard Hamming has said that do not blame your tools. So do not blame uh, that you do not have facilities and so on and therefore you are not able to do good research. You can always do good research even with the available facilities that was another point that was made. Uh, third point that was made was that you should have courage apart from brains. K J Somaya College, Mumbai. points uh, told by uh, Mr. Uh, Hemming. He had said that uh, you must have proactive, significant and independent thoughts as well as one of the uh, another important point what he had raised is you should short, uh, sort out all of the uh, important problems in your area. He said that what are the important problems in your field you should ask to your mind and continuously keep on track of that. So, as soon as you get the idea, attack on it and pursue your research for that. So, this is the point which I liked in this uh, study. Okay, so this center is mentioning uh, a few points uh, that uh, as soon as you hit upon an idea, you get after it and complete it. Thank you. Let us see whether we have answered this question. So, first question we wanted to answer was what are the motivation and objectives of a course such as? introduction to research. So, we said that this course is mainly meant to guide the research scholars into what skills, habits and attitudes they should have and how to develop them. So, it is like a map to be undertaken for research. And I also mentioned that some part of the course will be of immediate use. On the other hand, there are many points which will be appreciated only in the long run. Therefore, one must go over this material over and over again, maybe every 6 months when you are doing research. What are the differences between course based undergraduate, postgraduate and research education? So, we pointed out that research education is a license to teach and guide others. So, it requires that the person who has undergone PhD should be an independent thinker and should be able to manage one's own learning. We also pointed out some other differences between the research education and UG, PG education. What are the habits, skills and attitudes required for research and how do I develop them? So, we focused on uh, thinking, communication, experimentation and uh, management skills and we talked about right habits namely documentation, reading and participating in discussions. Now, as regards attitudes, we mentioned that you should have higher motivations other than motivation for uh, motivations like promotion and so on for doing some good quality work. So, you must be have a, you must have a taste for intellectually challenging uh, tasks, doing such tasks and getting satisfaction out of it or doing service to society by coming up with solutions to some of the pressing problems of society. Uh, as far as right attitudes are concerned, I would like to add a couple of more quotations. Now, it is said that if you cannot do what you like, you like what you do. So, many times we get into areas which may not be of our liking, but we should learn to develop a liking for whatever we get. This is very, very important. Another quotation that I would like to uh, give in the context of right attitude is, do not follow anyone, do not follow anyone, but learn from everyone and acknowledge it too. Now, this is a very important attitude for research scholars. If research scholars become mere followers, they will not develop anything new. On the other hand, it is true that they are only building up on what other people have done. Therefore, though we do not want to follow, we will be, we should be willing to learn from everyone. Okay? And we should also acknowledge, acknowledge that we have learned from others. So, this is uh, the issue of professional ethics. Okay. The next question we sought to answer was, how can I develop my thinking to generate ideas? So, we gave some prescriptions. 
such as uh, learn different ways of solving a problem, then look at the world in terms of analogies, you document analogies and uh, learn the different strategies of solving problems, you mentioned them and try to uh, whenever you are faced with a problem, you look at these strategies, look at the slides and try to see which of the strategies seem to be applicable. We also talked about what is the meaning of good thinking, what is the meaning of creativity. So, we said you are product, you are said to be productive if you can come up with different methods of doing the same thing, a wide variety of different methods for doing the same thing. In how many different ways, tabular, graphical or other ways can I present the data? This is another question that we answered. Then how can I find a problem and formulate a hypothesis? What, how and how much literature should I read? What are the essential elements of scientific method? How do I design setups and experiments and ensure accuracy in measurements? How can one be an effective and efficient oral and written communicator? Where and how do I publish and patent my work? How do I manage stress time and my guide and research student? And what are the ethical issues in research? We focused on answers to these questions. So, it is not that we have uh, our treatment is exhaustive and we have discussed all aspects related to these questions, but we have touched upon some important topics. Yes, I think uh, uh, thank you all for uh, your time. Uh, I would like to uh, conclude my lectures at this point.